Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to walnut blast your cylinder head. So my Mini Cooper is a turbocharged direct injection motor. And these motors are notorious for carbon buildup found on the intake, found basically on all the intake ports. So each one of the valves gets gummed up. BMW has a service interval where you're supposed to bring in your car, they're gonna sandblast or walnut blast the entire thing, clean it up, and get it running properly again. Now, if your valves are very gummed up, you're gonna be losing power, you're gonna be losing responsiveness from the motor, you're also gonna be losing, most importantly, fuel economy. So the engine isn't gonna be running as efficiently as it can, only because there's extra weight and there's more material on the valves. So because of that extra gunk and stuff that's built up on there, the engine's gonna run like crap. And if it gets bad enough, what actually happened in my situation is I'm actually running with a cylinder misfire in number four. So once I clean all of that up, once I clean it all out using the technique that I'm gonna show you guys today, I'm hopefully gonna be able to fix that problem and the engine is gonna be running perfectly smooth again. Off camera, I went ahead and removed the intake side of the motor so I could get access to my intake ports. So the valves on the intake side of the motor are exposed and I've just gone ahead quickly and taken out also the spark plugs, the piping going for the intercooler that leads up to the intake manifold, along with the piping over here for the cold side of the turbocharger. Now on every single one of them, every time that I took something out, I covered it up with a piece of 3M automotive tape, so none of the walnut that we're gonna be using later is gonna get into the engine. So with these key components out of the way, from the throttle body, the intake manifold, and the piping for the intercooler removed, the cold side for the turbocharger, and the actual intake themselves, with those all out of the way, we have access to the ports. So with the intake manifold removed from the block and the head, this is what we see. Now I've gone ahead and taped up each one of these ports here, Cylinder four, two, and one. I've taped them up with 3M automotive tape so that when we go ahead and walnut blast cylinder number three, we're not going to get any of the walnuts inside the other ports. Now, the way that we do this is we're gonna have to get it so that our pistons and everything are closing up these valves. So the valves on cylinder three, if this is the one we're working on, these valves need to be closed. If they aren't closed and you start walnut blasting this cylinder and leading up to these ports, you're gonna get walnuts inside the engine and when you go ahead and turn the car on, you're gonna kill your motor. Now it's very important to keep it so that the valves are closed. I can't stress enough on how important that is. If you don't know how to do that, if you want, you can jack the car up in the air and there's a bolt that you can turn on the crankshaft that'll actually turn the crankshaft and you can turn it to whatever degree you want and you can take a look at the ports and ensure they're closed. To manually crank over the engine so that we can get the valves to the proper positioning, we have to go into the fender liner in the wheel well area, and we need to find the crank pulley. So you can see that we have these two pulleys right here. The one on the bottom right is for the air conditioning, and the one in the middle, that one right there in the middle of the screen, that is an 18 millimeter. So you can stick an extension with your 18 mil socket on there and literally turn the engine over to the position that you want. I just finished doing up cylinder number three. So I sandblasted with the walnut media, the two valves that were found on the back side of here. So in this port back here, it branches out and goes to two valves. I grabbed my sandblasting gun, angled it in there with my vacuum in my other hand like this to catch all the debris. So I went from disgusting and gross it's actually not half bad. Now it's very difficult and a kind of a hard to reach area um, with my camera, but I'm gonna switch over to my iPhone and see if I can get some good footage from there. Okay guys, so bear with me. This is cylinder number four on the far left side of the engine. If we move over, this is the cylinder or the valves that I've done so far. So it's a little dusty. That's the walnut dust that you're seeing in there. But if you can take note, most of the dirt and the gunk and all that stuff is actually gone. So the valves are pretty clean. Now if we move over to a, to a side that I haven't done, take a look at how gross that is. That just goes to show how much gunk and everything is built up on the backside of these valves. Now the reason why this happens is we don't have any fuel injectors spraying gasoline and hitting the backside of the valves. The fuel injector is direct injection. So it's found on the inside part of the engine. So it's sprayed directly in there and the only thing that comes in contact with the back of the valves is any oil from the PCV system and anything that we really suck in. So anything that comes in contact with the back of the valves, it's not gonna be getting washed off from the additives in the fuel. And you're gonna get something like that. So this just goes to show how much gunk is happening after 120,000 kilometers of driving. 
So at this point, cylinder three and cylinder two are both at different parts of the engine, but both of the valves are closed. So I'm actually gonna be leaving the crankshaft where it is, and now that I'm done with cylinder three, I can put a piece of tape over top of that cover so no walnuts get inside of there and I don't have to clean it out later. You're just gonna cover it up. Even if you don't have tape, you can use a rag or any kind of way to prevent stuff from getting on the inside part of the engine. So with that cleaned up, I now have cylinder two exposed and I'm gonna repeat the exact same process with my media blaster and I'm gonna be basically spraying down walnuts in that entire section. Depending how bad your valves are, I would go ahead and start cleaning up some of the gunk that's in there with an old toothbrush, a paintbrush, or any other kind of brush that you have that's soft. Now, the reason why I like this toothbrush so much is that you can actually trim down the hairs on here. You can shape this to whatever size you want. If you also use an old toothbrush, the bristles are going to be softer than if you use a new toothbrush. So that's gonna be actually be very soft on the aluminum, on the valves, and you're gonna be basically making sure that you're not gonna be scratching up the cylinder head and causing any problems. You don't wanna use any kind of harsh abrasive or anything in there, any kind of chemicals, because you don't wanna ruin the valve guides or even the seal between the piston and the cylinder head. So anything soft to get off any excessive gunk would be a pretty good step to go with first. You just shove it back there and start cleaning some stuff up. See all of this gunk that's on this towel? See all that black stuff? That's all the buildup and sludge that's found on those valves by just using my little toothbrush. So I'm gonna go in now once that's actually like kinda clean um, with my walnut blaster and clean it up for good. Whenever you're ready, put on your safety goggles and ear protection because this kinda gets loud. Once you have them both on, you can turn your vacuum on, grab your media blaster ready, get it so you have enough room to get down there, and then get going. The method that I'm using here is a very effective, but not very efficient way of getting this done. Since the walnut media is not completely contained in the port, there's a lot of it that will escape and make a large mess. You're getting the carbon buildup removed from the engine, however you're making more work for yourself. This method that you're seeing me do here is cleaning up the valves by sticking the media blaster into each port and then suck up the excess with the vacuum. You'll be repeating this process until your valves are looking like new again. I would start off by blasting for about 10 seconds with your media blaster and your vacuum, then blow out any excess walnut that's in the port with a little air compressor and a blowing attachment, and then inspect it to see how much of the carbon is being removed. By purchasing the proper tools to get this procedure done, you'll get the project done in a much shorter time and you're going to get it done right. I'll show you later in this video how the specialty tools will make a world of a difference in cleaning out each one of your ports. So after about spraying these down for about 30 seconds to a minute, they actually came out really nice so far. Now I'm probably gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit more with the walnut blaster, but you can tell how much of a difference there is. You can actually see metal and all like the huge gunk chunks are removed. So just to show you guys the difference, this is cylinder one, this is cylinder two, that's cylinder three, and that's cylinder four. By spending a couple minutes to cleaning up each one of these, you can really tell how much of a difference there is. Once we turn the car on, we're gonna have that much better fuel economy, we're gonna get more performance out of it because we don't have all that extra crap that's stuck on the valves like we do there. This procedure is actually coming out pretty well. Now, I wanna go over and address these two little pieces that I have here. So these are specific pieces made for doing this exact project. So what this piece is right here is this little section right here goes into your intake port found on the back of the motor. So it basically just slides right in and then you have this sticking out of it. So what you do with it next is you attach the vacuum onto the top of that and then you will have a direct part that will be sucking out all the stuff that you're gonna be putting inside each one of your cylinders. So with that working, you're then gonna grab this other piece and there's a hole found on the bottom side of it. And if you can tell, right here, if you grab the little like cornered sandblasting bit, you can shove that in there. You can then sandblast the inside part of the runners that are going to each one of the intake valves. So since we have a port that'll like literally direct us right into it, this will be able to clean everything out. And then with the excess media that's inside the cylinder, the vacuum will suck it out. So it looks something like that.
You can pick this up online. I'll see if I can get a link for you guys in the description because this little tool right here will be making your life a lot easier, especially if you plan on doing this procedure more than once. This tool, this little combination setup right here cost me about a hundred bucks, but it is going to be worth it in the long run. The sandblasting machine that I have right here, just like the little gun with the pickup tube, it does work, it does work well. However, it's not exactly a very efficient system. So you have to use this and then the vacuum and then use this again and then the vacuum. With this, you can use it all in one shot and it'll make cleaning a lot easier. So this right here is cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, and finally cylinder four. This is so much cleaner and so much nicer than what we were working with before. You can see the metal on the valves and you can see there's not really any kind of dirt. The little dust that you see there around the outside that's a little bit brown is the dust from our walnut. Now once you turn the car on you can like basically get all that cleaned out by just driving the car a little bit and all that dust should come out. If you guys are really particular and you want to get rid of it beforehand you can use a cloth with a little bit of water and it should come out very easily. But that right there is the finished product and that looks so much better than what we were working with before. My final verdict for this project is that this piece is a must. This cuts down your time easily in half. The reason being is that you can stick in both the blowgun and the sandblaster both into that port and you can clean out and sandblast each one of the ports stupidly quick. So using this, you're gonna be saving yourself a whole bunch of time. So if I were you guys, if you guys plan on doing this project, I would spend a couple bucks and buy this adapter. So it just slips into the backside of the head where the intake ports are. You could probably use this also for the exhaust side, but I'm not gonna be testing that out for today. When you're satisfied with how clean the walnut shells clean out your intake ports, you can put your spark plugs back in, you can reinstall your entire intake system, and once you put your key in your ignition, the car should start up and should run a lot better than before. If you guys are interested in picking up any of the products that I use today, you guys can check the description box and I'll have links for you there for everything that I've used. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.